we are just lousy presenters. We get up and we immediately start killing our ideas by saying something like, well, me and our team, we got together, but you know, we don't want you to th guys think this is the only idea. What are you doing? What we normally do is we kill our ideas instead of presenting our ideas. Look, there's gonna be plenty of time for people to kill your ideas. The time to present and to pitch your idea really well is only yours to win. My grandfather, Henry by God Ford, he had himself an idea that changed the world. Man comes to my office with an idea, that man keeps his job. So you gotta prepare, you gotta stand up, you gotta have your presentation ready. What this movie brings out is the idea of, no, I have something to say. And that's why we're calling this segment, Champion Your Ideas. So what you see throughout the movie is a group of individuals in formal and informal settings pitching their ideas, championing their ideas, and standing firm to convince the other person to come along with me. We're gonna look at several scenes that show how to recognize what situations call for which type of presentations, how to read the room, and when to say the tough things. You see, kids today, they want glamour. They wanna go fast. So the first scene is when Lee Iacocca, he is presenting the original idea that it's time for the Ford Motor Company to go racing. And he receives an incredible amount of critique. We're already in racing, Iacocca. Ford's not, he's not buying any of it. Lee Beebe's not buying any of it. And then of course the PowerPoint goes back. Is this part of it? Notice the first thing he did is he got up. Most of us don't get up to percent. NASCAR, it's, it's regional, sir. And really show confidence, be willing to take the, the, the funny remarks that happen. James Bond does not drive a Ford. That's because he's a degenerate. You're cool with it. That's all part of presenting. In the last three years, you and your marketing team have presided over the worst sales slump in U.S. history. Why exactly should Mr. Ford listen to you? Man, I mean, who wants to hear that? You have to be compelling and say, yes, I need you to change the way we're thinking about this particular thing, and I need us to think in a different way. Because we've been thinking wrong. And he showed the consequences of ignoring it to get to the attention of Ford. Ferrari. Now they've won four out of the last five Le Mans. We need to think like Ferrari. Get ready that they're gonna shoot that down. Ferrari makes fewer cars in a year than we make in a day. <laughs> We spend more on toilet paper than they do on their entire output. You've got to have your answer ready. Enzo Ferrari will go down in history as the greatest car manufacturer of all time. Appeal to winning, appeal to the ego, appeal to the vision, the heritage, the legacy that you're going to leave behind. It's because of what his cars mean. Victory. Ferrari wins at Le Mans. People, they, they want some of that victory and that it's worth taking the risk. And then when they say, yeah, but come on, the money's not there, notice what Leo Iacocca did. This would take years, decades to test and develop a race team capable of taking out Ferrari. Enzo has spent every lira he's got chasing perfection. You know something? He got there, and now he's broke. That's presenting, that's championing your idea. All right, so they approved it, let's go to the second scene. The second scene, is when Lee Iacocca is meeting with Ferrari. Now, that meeting doesn't go very well at all. You will need some time to read this. And you notice he's being different. This time, he's not standing up. It's a different environment. Io ci vado o non ci vado? If I wish to race Le Mans, and you do not wish for me to race Le Mans, do we or do we not go? You do not go. In quel caso, se non deve Grazie, ho capito. Watch the emotional control that Leo showed while he's being berated. Tornatevi in Michigan. Go back to Michigan. Brutte, insignificanti macchine. To your big ugly factory making its ugly little cars. Most of us would just get defensive what he did. Tell him he's not Henry Ford. He's Henry Ford the second. That look right there, that body language, that's the body language that we all need to model. But you have to keep your cool, especially when you're being attacked personally. Ford is not happy about the fact that it didn't go well. So you gotta pretty much keep your cool because your, your opponent, your internal opponent is in the room smirking their way all the way to seeing you fail. He used us to up his price. 
and bears our company to insult your leadership. But you notice the difference between Lee Iacocca and his friend. What exactly did he say? One guy was not willing to say the truth, and the other one was willing to say exactly what was said. He said Ford makes ugly little cars and we make them in an ugly factory. I let the words of what was said at the meeting be what impacts the decision in the room instead of you trying to be the one that sells it. Present the data and let the data sit in and let the other person receive it. Go on. He said you're not Henry Ford. You're Henry Ford II. So you have to convince the forge of the word by letting the information you bring into the table be what carries the day to help and cross over the line. We're going to build a race car. In this next scene, what we see is that Ford's not happy with the performance that Shelby and his team is because they just lost an important race recently and he's being called to the carpet over. He gets asked to come up to, what, the eighth floor? I don't know. And he basically is going to not only be held accountable, he's probably going to get fired. Mr. Ford, gentlemen, Shelby, give me one reason why I don't fire everyone associated with this abomination, starting with you. And right here is where a lot of people get defensive and, oh, sir, I'm sorry, and anything. Well, no, he didn't. Well, sir, I was thinking about that very question as I sat out there in your lovely waiting room. First thing he did, he agreed with him. He got Ford to realize, I'm not going to downplay that what you feel is very real. We haven't worked out how to corner yet, or stay cool, or stay on the ground. And a lot of stuff broke. In fact, the only thing that didn't break was the brakes. The best thing to do is to advance the other person. Advance your worst critique and say, I, I, I not only understand how you feel, I've been thinking about it, and I think I feel the same way. We don't even know if our paint job will last a whole 24 hours. That is one of the most powerful ways to disarm and calm down the heatedness that happens. That is a tactic that most of us do not want to practice because we don't have the emotional control. We immediately get defensive and we immediately tell you, yes, sir, but let me tell you, no, the, the other person, the Ford person is not in the mindset for you to tell him anything. Acknowledge the fact that you screwed up. Be sincere. And then he uses a very nice segue when he says, with due respect, sir. All due respect, sir. And with the people in the room that he's asking to be removed out of the way, he says what needs to be said. You can't win a race by a committee. You need one man in charge. Now, the good news, as I see it, is that even with all the extra weight, we still managed to put old Mr. Ferrari exactly where we want him. We're faster than he is, even with the wrong driver and all the committees. That man is scared to death that this year, you actually might be smart enough to start trusting me. You present your case, appeal to the decision maker. Go ahead, Carol. Go to war. Thank you, sir. And that was the whole shift of the movie because now he was in total control. But Leo Beebe's not happy. Just because some people in the powers of be approve it, that doesn't mean you're not gonna have a p opposition internally. You're saying Beebe is 100% in charge now? Yes, and he wants Miles gone. Look, he's gonna tell you in person now all he is hoping for is that you lose your cool. They pull his driver away from the team and you, Matt Damon, you're sitting there trying to resell them, and now others are making decisions and I'm being gutted. So I gotta be really shrewd and innovative as to how I'm gonna do that. Mr. Ford, this is a surprise. Apologies for the unannounced intrusion, Mr. Shelby. Uh, Shelby, can I have a word? Sure. In private? Ah, uh, yeah, that would be preferable. I have been appointed overall executive director of the racing program. Now, I, I do hope that this won't be a problem between us. Well, I assure you, Leo, it will not. They lock up BB in one room while the other one uh, goes out and takes Ford on a drive of his life. Hit it. That a boy. <laughs> About right now, the uninitiated have a tendency to soil themselves. And then he pitched him. I had no idea. Now you want to win Le Mans. You really want to take first place. Ken Miles is a man to do it. You know I've already appointed Leo Beebe director Which is exactly why I'm talking to you. 
So he said, look, I'll make you a deal. If he wins, he gets to drive Le Mans. And if he doesn't? Ford Motor Company gets full ownership of Shelby American. Before Carroll Shelby went into that car, he already knew he was gonna pitch this, he was gonna then say this, and if it didn't go well, his end game negotiation was having to be, I'm gonna have to go for the clincher. Lock, stock, and brand forever because I need a decision made because I've got to champion my idea. He got his driver and they pushed ahead. Fantastic scheme. Do I recommend you locking people in a room? Of course I don't recommend you locking people in a room, but sometimes you have to be shrewd. Play the situation to where certain people that are going to be in your way are not going to be in the decision when the decision's made and go forward with it. What are some of the takeaways we can get from all this? Phase the fear of rejection. Your ideas are worth you facing those fears. Know your points. You have to be ready for the objection and you have to have answers for those objections. Present well, stand up, show confidence. Don't kill your ideas. Say what needs to be said. Read the room for the right time and the right way to say it. And above everything else is have the emotional control to not react from taking things personal, but be professional and calm in every single situation. There's no such thing that says that sells itself. Human beings sell to other human beings. Bring the human element to it and make them confident that you're gonna see it through. See you at the movies.